Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Jared Cohen. I'm the policy advisor responsible for cannabis policy here at the Canadian Chamber. We're joined today by Kristen McLeod, who's the director of drug policy and the law enforcement director, directorate at Public Safety Canada. Ms. McLeod is the director of the drug policy division, and in, in this capacity, she manages a diverse portfolio of drug enforcement policy and program initiatives, such as cannabis, drug impaired driving, opioids, and other drugs. She has occupied executive level functions within public safety since 2015, and prior to joining Public Safety Canada, she has worked in management consulting and in various managerial capacities in the federal public service. Ms. McLeod, thanks so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be with you too. Um, so yes, just a little bit of information about, uh, about me and my team here at Public Safety Canada. We do work with um, um, colleagues across the federal public service, including Health Canada, who's the policy lead on, on uh, the cannabis uh, legalized regime. And um, we seek to help support the public safety objectives of cannabis legalization. And this includes areas like addressing the illegal market, as well as uh, attending to issues like drug impaired driving. Yeah, and that's a very important part of the Cannabis Act. That's, I would say, probably the, the other half. I and mean, we always talk about the public health, but there's definitely a very strong public safety aspect to it. So very important work there. Um, so the Canadian Chamber sent a mandate letter to the Minister of Public Safety, and in that letter, you know, we are uh, the Canadian Chamber urged the department to work with the industry institution, like financial institutions, um, and agencies such as you know FinTrack uh, to combat the illicit sector. Can you provide us with an idea of what public safety has already done in this regard, and perhaps maybe some of the next steps might be? Sure. Um, yes. Well, as, as you well know, one of the primary objectives of the legal cannabis regime and, and certainly of interest to public safety is to keep cannabis profits out of the hands of criminals. And we have achieved collectively a great deal of progress on the road to meeting this objective. Um, since the coming into force of the Cannabis Act and its regulations, the legal cannabis industry is significantly displacing the black market. And this has been the result of intensive efforts across the federal government and with provinces and territories, industry and policing agencies. But we're aware that the illegal cannabis market continues to represent significant competition to the legal market, as well as public safety harms for Canadians. And disrupting illicit activities is a complex undertaking, but a critical element towards continuing to grow the legal cannabis market. And that's why we remain committed to working in close collaboration with our provincial, territorial, law enforcement, and industry partners across the country to combat the illicit cannabis market. For example, following reports from law enforcement and provinces and territories of the growing presence of illicit cannabis vendors online, in summer 2019, Public Safety Canada established a working group composed of federal, provincial, and territorial partners, including policing agencies, to address the issue. And taking enforcement action against criminal actors involved in the cannabis market is the responsibility of, of police of jurisdiction. And we have seen policing agencies achieve some very encouraging results to date. Um, the working group itself to address illicit online cannabis sales has the objective of complementing and, and supporting enforcement actions by pursuing disruption strategies, creating a forum for exchanging valuable information and resources on enforcement practices and building public awareness activities to help shift consumers to the legal market. As part of efforts, for example, to disrupt illicit online sales, we've been actively engaging with financial platforms and institutions to identify ways to disrupt illicit activities. And we've been really pleased with the level of engagement and collaboration we've seen so far and believe that initiatives like the new strategy and public-private partnership in British Columbia to combat money laundering throughout the province will yield important results. This initiative, um, it's cross-sectoral, uh, it brings together key partners such as FinTrack, the RCMP and private industry to work together on, on protecting the economic integrity of legal activities as well as disrupting illicit financial activity. So that's amazing. That uh, sounds like some very good work to be being done. Um, you know, you mentioned a lot of kind of the, the governmental work and, and some of the cross-sectoral approach, but um, I guess, what I'm looking for, you know, could you explain a little bit more how um, industry has been involved in this uh, and maybe how it could continue to be involved? Sure. Um, so certainly uh, we work really closely across government and policing jurisdictions through through a variety of forums. Um, this includes through working groups and symposiums to enhance and, and support law enforcement efforts by bringing together subject matter experts to discuss common issues, opportunities and strategies in support of the legal cannabis framework. 
We also meet regularly with industry associations and representatives from the financial sector. These various fora are needed to identify issues and to work collaboratively using a cross-sectoral public-private approach to develop solutions and strategies to disrupt the illicit market. Excellent. Um, and uh, you know, one one big issue that's uh, you know come up a lot is is the sale of uh, cannabis products. You know, online, it's not just as simple as going to your neighborhood drug dealer. And uh, now, now there's a pretty, um, if I may, robust operation happening online. So, what what can you tell us about how that's uh, how that's taking place and how public safety is combating that? Well, we're working closely with, with a range of partners to tackle the online illicit cannabis markets. And we know that tackling illegal activity on the web requires significant policing resources, but it also can't be tackled by policing alone. It requires strong collaborative effort from various stakeholders, including industry leaders who have a thorough understanding of cannabis market dynamics and activity. So as a result, the federal government seeks to work with industry to better understand the overall market the nature of transactions, including illicit transactions and actions that need to be taken, such as closing illicit bank accounts, for example. In the coming months, Public Safety Canada will also be engaging with other third party entities, such as delivery services, social media platforms, search engines. And of course, we look forward to continuing to engage with the cannabis industry, too. Great, great. Um, and I guess my last question then, so you're saying, you know, policing is not enough. So then what, what can, um, you know, industry and government do to educate the public about, you know, perhaps illicit products or, or the, you know, the dangers of illicit products? Um, how do you see that relationship evolving? That is certainly a really key component. Um, and, and as part of our actions to address illicit online cannabis sales, um, Public Safety Canada and our partners have been undertaking activities to raise awareness of the dangers of ordering and using cannabis from illegal online sources, um, as well as helping consumers to properly identify legal cannabis vendors. So Public Safety Canada, for example, has deployed a social media campaign on Twitter. Um, we've created animated videos and implemented a new web page on our website, all aimed at raising awareness of, of the dangers of ordering and of using cannabis from illegal online sources as well as the advantages of purchasing from, uh, from legal cannabis sources. And we certainly encourage people to, to visit the website for, for more information about that. We've also worked with Health Canada to develop a web page containing links to provincial territorial lists of authorized cannabis retailers across Canada. And this will help consumers to identify legal retailers in their respective province or territory. And provinces and territories have also been busy uh, with public awareness activities too. You may be aware of efforts from the provinces of British Columbia, of Ontario, of New Brunswick, for example, to inform the public of uh, the toxicity and harms associated with illegal cannabis products. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, I'm definitely aware of the one that's in Ontario being, being based here, but um, you know, this has all been very informative and I, you know, I very much look forward to seeing where uh, things go with public safety in terms of educating, informing, and then also uh, enforcing the, uh, you know, the, the public safety aspects of the Cannabis Act. And I, you know, I'm sure industry stands ready with you uh, to, to work with you uh, in this regard. So Mr. Cloud, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, I've certainly learned a lot and I hope our, uh, our viewers have too. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Jared. Really appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you today. And, and yes, we certainly look forward to our ongoing collaboration with the cannabis industry as well.